All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we are talking about the Circle of Undeath Druid from Riftborn, Champions of the Multiverse. Yes. So if you're new to the channel or subclass series, what we're going to do is go through all the abilities gained in the subclass. We're going to rate the roleplay, combat, and synergy based on how the abilities gained improve the base class abilities. That's right. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be entered in our D&D Beyond Players Bundle giveaway. Because we're not that far away from that. All that being said, let's jump straight into this. Starting off as a druid, uh, and I know this is a sore spot for Jameson when we get other subclasses, the druid gets to do this, but it is what it is. Uh, they do get some free extra spells on top of, for their subclass, but with the specific with this one, they get an extra cantrip at two as well with spare the dying, which again, on flavor, makes complete sense. Uh, we're also getting things that get you know, around diseases and weaknesses because we're undead, you know. We, we, we don't, if we're undead, we don't feel well, I would say. That makes sense. Uh, Ray of Enfeeblement, Gentle Repose, Speak with Dead, Vampire Touch, Blight, which is a great spell in general. I, I, I love the flavor of it besides its effectiveness. Death Ward, Contagion, and Reincarnate. I will say that's probably one of the most thematic spells. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't hit that more on the nose than where that is for sure. Also at level two. We have Armor of Undeath. When you are within 30 feet of a dead creature, provided that the creature has been dead no longer than 10 days... Which is you plenty can, of time. Yeah, you can use an action <laughs> to assimilate parts of its corpse onto your body, forming a skeletal, fleshy armor that has the following features. First, the armor has a magical barrier of hit points, equal to your druid level, plus as the assimilated creature's constitution score. Minimum of one. Whenever you take damage, the armor takes the damage instead. If this damage reduces the armor's barrier to zero, you take any redeeming remaining damage. So essentially it's temp HP. Yes, but it's not, which means it stacks with temp HP. Yes, that is the, an important a very distinction. correct distinction. Uh, also, the armor grants you an AC equal to 13 plus your wisdom modifier while you wear it, and you can don and off it as an action. Also, if the creature was resistant or immune to one or more damage types in life, choose one of them. You gain resistance to that damage type for as long as you wear the armor. Interesting, again, specification there that if it has resistance or immunity, you get resistance. So if yes. something was immune to necrotic damage, immune to poison damage, you just get resistance to it. Right. And then lastly, the armor is a reflection of your alignment. For example, if you are of good alignment, the armor might appear as a set of plate crafted from finely polished bone or boiled leather skin straps. If you are evil, it might instead appear as an intimidating scale mail crafted from osseous spikes and fleshy blood-stained sinew. In, in what universe? I mean, I know... The process of making leather does require like drying it out and whatnot, but boiled leather just doesn't make me think of good. <laughs> no, not necessarily. Just the way that's worded, yeah, more, yeah, more so sure, than anything sure. else. It's like that doesn't make me think of. Right. I'm boiling things. I think boiling things alive. It's like a yeah, typically like, that would not skew in the good direction. <laughs> Uh, the armor does last for eight hours, at which point the magic fades and it disintegrates to dust. Once you use the feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short rest. If you use this feature again on a new corpse, the new armor created replaces your old one. So eight hours, once per short rest, or if you use it before then, it just you take on the new one. Staying true to form with Gardener of the Dead at level six, you learn to imbue fungi, and which is just it's one of the easiest memes in you know he's just a fun fun guy. Sorry, couldn't help myself. That's my dad joke. I was I was withholding. <laughs> Yeah, I'm proud of you. Let me do it this time. <laughs> and, and plant matter with limited sentience and bind them to corpses, animating them for a short time. You can use your action and expend one use of your wild shape to reanimate the intact, that's a, again, poor clarification, intact body of a creature that has been dead for no longer than one month. Again, plenty of time there. Mm -hmm. Lots of leeway. An animated creature uses the statistics it had in life with the following modifications. It has an intelligence, wisdom, and charisma score of... One, it loses its multi-attack feature, and if it has any features or actions that have a recharge value, it can only use them once. Once. Still, still nice. Yeah, not per short rest, per long rest, or whatever, just once. It can't use legendary actions or lair actions and lose any legendary resistances. Sure. Just, just handicap the snot out of it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's a good reason for that, let's be real, because legendary resistances are terrible. Anyway, so, so, so box off. Creature is undead and has hit point maximum equal to three times your druid level. It uses your proficiency bonus for its attack rolls and spell save DC in place of its own saves. It can't cast spells or concentrate on them, nor can it attune to magical items. Its melee weapon attacks count as magical for the purposes of overcoming immunity and resistances to non-magical bludgeoning, slashing, piercing damage. 
creature you animate is loyal to you and your companions and remains animated for a number of hours equal to half your druid level rounded down. After which it crumbles into dust and is destroyed. In combat, anime creature follows your verbal instructions, no action required by you, and it takes its turn directly after yours. If you don't give it an instruction, it defends itself, follows you, and takes the dodge action. You can have a number of animated creatures at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Equal to your wisdom modifier, minimum of one, and the combined challenge rating of all creatures you have animated can't total more than half of your druid level rounded down. If you animate a new creature while you have the maximum number already animated, you must choose one of the old creatures for the new one to replace. Yes. So at max, you'll have a, a CR 10 at level 20. Mm -hmm. Or you could have like 5 CR 2s, 2 CR 5s. Yeah. So it's there's a couple of restrictions in terms of you know, yes. CR level compared to yours and number yes. of. And that was one of my things too. Like when I read this, I'm like, so wait, you're telling me you could have an ancient red dragon? It's like, no, because that is way past CR. But tickets. you could get it. They have that, that you get a young red dragon. Level 10, we have Aura of Undeath. Your body begins to decay and the necrotic energy flowing through your being alters you. You become immune to necrotic damage and exhaustion. Can't be frightened. Don't need to eat, drink, or sleep. And you exude an aura of necrotic spores in a 10-foot radius while you are conscious. The aura bolsters magic used by you and your allies and poisons your enemies. When a creature within your aura casts a damage-dealing spell or takes damage from a spell, you can choose to have that spell inflict additional necrotic damage equal to your wisdom modifier on a hit or failed saving throw. I think with this that's important is, like, for example, if you're the one casting the spell, you'd be inside the aura, so you get the bonus, or yeah. if an ally's within it, or if you're standing next to the creature and someone else hits it from a distance, yeah. you can get it. So you have, like, two different ways, really, to deal that extra damage, which is nice. Very nice. And the other option that goes along with this aura is Rot Spray. When a hostile creature hits you or a friendly creature within your aura with a melee weapon attack, you can use your reaction to cause rotting blood to spray from your fresh wound. Attacker must succeed on a con save equal to your druid save or be poisoned for one minute. Target poisoned in this way is haunted by the conception of its own demise. For the duration, it is frightened of you and takes 2d8 psychic damage at the start of each of its turns as it struggles against the visions. The poison target can repeat the save at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on a success. You can use Rot Spray a number of times equal to your Wisdom modifier and regain all uses on a long rest. So again, very strong with the themes here. So before we get to the Capstone ability, yeah. just give you a little bit more information about Riftborn. Mm -hmm. The Kickstarter is ending pretty soon, so make sure you get up on that. Yes. Uh, but basically with this one, big elaborate boss fights, yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. So you I get like it. Uh, special, <laughs> you get battle maps, you get the minis that go along with it, you have different versions at different CR levels, you can just pick that monster that you like and have a CR that's fitting for your campaign yeah. if you wanted to plug and play there's, that. There's nothing more frustrating when you're trying to put together a campaign one shot. You have a monster in mind you really like the flavor of, but you're like, we got it's a level six characters, I can't throw a CR 20 at, this, <laughs> right. at my party. Also with the, the maps, they have these dynamic battle maps. There are pieces of the map that you can reveal with different stickers and other effects, so as you change through phases of a boss fight, mm -hmm. maybe the battleground may change based on that, and it's quick and easy to shift from phase to phase. Besides that the other fair thing because i'm a maps person <laughs> as a general rule uh is the the arena fighting mechanics they have where it's almost like if you wanted to do like a gauntlet gladiator style mm -hmm. thing they have a great alleyway that shows you exactly how to do it and gives you a great framework to either use completely or to build off of from there over 10 races and subclass options that'll be yes. involved if you haven't checked out the riftborn night flame paladin we did that as well so we you can check that out if i get another idea for that we'll also have downloads below for some free content there's a vineborn which is one of the race options and these two subclasses that we have reviewed uh, down below so make sure you check those out check out the link in the description to get on this kickstarter before it ends don't miss out on this one finally for that capstone ability we have corpse churner as an action you can choose any number of corpses you have animated within 30 feet of you and cause them to explode destroying the corpse a creature must make a dexterity saving throw against your spell save DC for each exploding corpse within 10 feet of it. A creature mm -hmm. takes necrotic damage based on the size of the corpse on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. You can use this feature twice and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. And it's scaling up damage. Tiny is 1d6, small 3d6, medium 4d6, large 6d6, huge is 8d6. And if you have a gargantuan creature, 10d6 yeah, you have to Damage. think about too how much space that gargantuan takes up as mm -hmm. well. And, yeah. and the thing that's crazy is 
it's all of them explode within the radius. Mm-hmm. So if you have multiple, you're going to be hitting multiple explosions. Yeah, so if you've got three mediums and they all explode right. within they range of overlap. one thing. They could be overlapping. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could have one, like all three of them just surround something take their then. turn to like mangle something and mm-hmm. you blow them up. Yep. So that's yeah. That, that's fun. That's twelve d six damage. I immediately, of course, think of uh, the Diablo Necromancer has corpse explosion. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much S- send them explosion. in, and right as they're about to die, blow them up. Yeah, blow it up. <laughs> so yeah, those are all the abilities in the subclass. So we'll just move on into the rating portion. Mm-hmm. First up is the roleplay asterisk. As always, talking about roleplay, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initiative order. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background, that's on you as a player. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in the subclass and how they might improve your potential in those role play scenarios. That's right. So, that being said, looking at this from a role play perspective, there are some interesting options. You get some a couple decent spells. We for do. sure. Yes, without this. question. Uh, the bone armor for resistance could potentially come into play like for example my first thought is like if you're in some kind of volcanic you know mountain or something yep. you're fighting some fire elementals you know you take that fire resistance when you're mm-hmm. in a fiery place yep. it's probably yep. going to be good for exploration so in my, that kind of uh, circumstance there's some I went straight to the RP value of this of uh, you just find you try to freak some people out scare some people like if you went to just a random town and you want to like frighten some people scare some people away or just be a distraction yeah yep. if you're covered in just bones and skin of yeah sure random creatures and you just go like Rah! you start running at people you're freaking people out man it's not an Alex thing but I think of Dwight in the office when he's when they're doing oh. the CPR and it cuts off the face and he's <laughs> Anyway, it's creepy. You can do that kind of stuff if you're feeling. Yeah. Uh, but right, that is, right, right over my head. That's a bit more niche on there. Yeah, so everyone make fun of Alex because he doesn't watch The Office. Or hasn't watched The Office. Nope. Uh, other stuff. I'll take it. Right on the chest. <laughs> I ain't scared. Uh, some other niche stuff a little bit is the reanimated corpses. There is a time limit on them. There is. Of course, too. Uh, I mean, there are... When it comes to that stuff, there can be pros and cons, of course. Yep. If you're in a town... Probably not the best idea to have a bunch of dead things following you around. All the time, yeah. Probably wouldn't go over very well with Town's Guard and things like that. But if you're, like, in a dungeon setting, you could use them to test out traps, you mm-hmm. know, like, scout ahead. Like, all right, that looks like a sketchy uh, floor plate over there. A bunch of guys the zombie walk over <laughs> on that first. There is a little bit of niche RP with the aura. I mean, you're granting frightened or poisoned, but there's that, like, damage attached to it so that can get a little it gets a little with that. it's one of those it probably is going to transition into combat if you've got more than like one person you're affecting it's probably going to because I can see right. maybe just and one person's taking psychic damage and you're just like torturing them or messing with their head or whatever right. so yeah it's it's a little bit niche on there but yeah. there's maybe some potential with that that being said we went with a 3 out of 5 on the role play there's some solid options but they fall a little bit more on the niche side of things and you, and you do run the risk of, like James has said, you try to get into civilization doing necromancy. It's, As a general rule, it's the most frowned upon form of magic. In most settings, <laughs> yes, it is. But I think from an exploration side of things, it, you have some potency. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, because again, like James has said, exploration, saving damage you may take, or giving right. you knowledge of, without having to risk your own well-being. Sure. Very valuable. On to the combat side of things, where this thing definitely has more potency Because A, it's never a bad thing to get more survivability, which this thing gives you in spades. A second form of temporary hit points that can be stacked with temp HP that doesn't get in its way. Eventually we'll have an AC of 17 and even 18. As a druid, you won't have heavy armor unless you've multi-classed somewhere else. So it's going to give you a lot of survivability that way. Find bigger creatures you can pull from, getting their constitution score. You're going to give you quite a bit of, you know... Temporary HP that's not temp HP <laughs> right. with that armor on top of it. And my favorite thing about it, really, besides that, is the fact that it stacks with temp HP, is the fact that if you know something is immune or resistant to a damage type, you can immediately grab that for yourself. Right. By, after, you know, by after grabbing it. After, 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 <laughs> after it's down, yeah, I'm saying. Right. But for future, like James said, if you know you're in an environment, yeah, right. like if you're up in a mountainside and you get you know jumped by some creature that is resistant to cold damage and you're climbing up some mountains, I'm like, this might be a good thing just to have some cold resistance for the rest of the day. It's pretty great. On the, of course, being able to control any kind of extra creatures because 
you want to irritate your DMs in a hurry, find ways to mess up the action economy. Add as many things and to initiative order. Add as many things to initiative order as humanly <laughs> possible, which this obviously is going to do. For your sake, for effectiveness, it's great. Your DMs will probably hate it. So you run this with like some other druid that summons things. I mean, you're a druid. You can summon. <laughs> and you, you can, can summon more summon. things. So you, you like do like conjure <laughs> elemental, and then you do this, and you've got like all of the stuff. Yep, that's great. For a limited amount of time. Yeah, yeah. for a limited. Uh, it's it's a good thing that it does specify you know their intelligence wisdom scores being lower for stuff that does affect that. It makes right. sense for it to be poor. Losing multi attack and. Legendary actions and all that nerfing because it's an undead corpse of whatever right. you've reanimated, so it's not going to have its full strength yeah. and ability. So that all makes sense, but it does let its you know damage overcome magical or overcoming resistances to magical or non magical bludgeoning pierce. Actually. That is, I worded that just the worst way possible, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to go back and re unbutcher that. Because, yeah, I'm not going to do that any better than what I just tried to get the point across. But you know what I'm talking about. We've said that phrase enough times. But the, the restrictions seem like a lot with the combination of level or mm. s- combined CR. But it's really not that much. Because it gives you some flexibility. You can get one big thing or right. two decently sized things or a bunch of little things. So you've got, you know, you know what you're playing with as you keep going. And it also, when I was reading through, I just knew it was going to say if you're at the maximum... It's going to automatically get rid of your oldest one. It doesn't. Get the, the fact that you have a choice there makes that fantastic. The R's, again, is interesting. Don't need to either drink or sleep. Also, like you can just go for days upon days without having to slow down for any rest or whatever. So again, for flavor sake, that's kind of interesting. But the exhaustion and you know, frightening and necrotic thing, being immune to all that is pretty solid, really. Uh, also, it's the extra necrotic damage on top of your spells. It's not, not It's not wild, but again, it doesn't cost you anything, so it's yeah. a passive. It's always going to happen. It's fantastic. Um, the Rot Spray, I love what it's doing effective-wise. Again, it's a constitution save, which we all know is not great, but it is still a chance against your druid save to poison a target, and they take psychic damage at the start of each turn because you're messing mm. with you know your head and whatnot, so that's, that's nifty. I do like the flavor of that on top of the psychic damage being one of the best types to have damage from. And finally, of course, Corpse Turner. You're exploding corpses. You could do multiple on a target, depending on the size. You can do it a couple times a day, so you can plan around it. So it gives druids an actually pretty good source of burst damage. Yeah, without spell slots. Without so. using spell slots, and druids are got have more like not necessarily crowd control and battlefield manipulation yeah. as opposed to like the full on blaster caster with their right. spell list. They have a couple AOE spells, but then they don't have as anywhere near as much as like a sorcerer. Wizard. Right. So th- this is a cool little extra option on top of it. With all of that in there, survivability, extra damage, all that kind of things, we went with a four out of a possible five on the yeah. combat side of things. Yeah, I think some of the stuff holding it back a little bit is there's some limitations on here. Obviously, you haven't used wild shape to reanimate stuff. You it has a time duration on it, and there's a CR limitation as well. Yeah. It does scale, which is nice. Um, the armor, you know, again, lasts for eight hours. Per short rest, you can do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, there's some limitations here that kind of hinder that a little bit. So just kind of taking those thoughts over on into the synergy side of things, you do get some good defensive options. I mean, the the bone armor stuff is is really nice to have. The that, armor and the fact that comes online early. Yeah, level like two. The, the fact mean, you're getting that yeah. early gives you a ton of extra survivability early on. Right. I think that AC early on is going to be really helpful because, as Alex was saying, later on when you get kind of better armor, maybe magical armor, yeah. then you're not really you know too worried about that AC on there, but the extra... Pseudo temp HP mm-hmm. and the resistances. I mean, you're never going to be upset about having that stuff. Mm-hmm. So it is. It's going to last for a while and make it worth your while throughout your leveling process. Mm-hmm. The reanimated stuff helps again with action economy. Just sometimes having other bodies in combat, yep. just to soak up damage, can help. Now the other thing too with those is they have a pretty small HP pool. It's only three times your druid level. So yeah. at level ten, I mean you're <laughs> you're not gonna have a ton of HP for those things. Thirty HP. So even if you did find a way to reanimate a young red dragon or something, yeah, it's still only gonna have thirty HP, and it's not gonna have its multi attack. It's gonna right. you know have its dragon breath one time, yeah, which is nice. It gives you some again some potential to find some more AOE abilities for yeah. recharge and stuff. 
it's going to really make your DM think about what kind of bosses he throws against your party as well. Because like, yeah. later on, this could be used back against me. So yeah. I kind of plan accordingly for that. Yep. So, But yeah, there's some interesting defensive options, some offensive options, some action economy impact, and of course, you know, bonus flat bonus damage from the aura, mm-hmm. the immunity to necrotic. So all of that being said, we gave it a four on the synergy as well. Yep. So pretty solid uh, in the combat synergy and roleplay. I mean, it's just... Pretty, it's a pretty well balanced subclass, I yeah. would say. Because well, yeah, it's got its limitations, so it's not like holy crap, you have to play this because it's absolutely busted. But right. you can, it, it does a really good job of giving druids options, giving some things they either aren't great in at mm-hmm. base, or to me, the biggest thing in any time you're dealing with a druid subclass. Okay, moon druid exists. <laughs> give me a reason it's a high bar. To, for my wild shape in combat. Right. And give me a good use for it, a, a viable use for it, because. Like you know, otherwise it's only useful for RP. If I don't, if your subclass doesn't give you a good use for it in the combat side of things, this one does because right. yeah, the animation, yeah. the animation again, you're messing with you're messing with action economy. More things that either can go in there and do damage or take hits. Yeah, that, both. And the other thing too that's nice with that is it doesn't use your bonus action or action or anything to command them. Nope. You just have to you know make a mental command basically yes. to control them, which is nice because a lot of these like pet master kind of classes. You have to use, use like your bonus, bonus action, action to command them to do something on their turn. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is just a free way, even if you know they don't necessarily have you know, multi-attack and all this other stuff, it's just free damage that mm-hmm. you can potentially have. Yep. Or worst case scenario, it just soaks up some hits yeah. from something. So you're never going to be upset about that. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. Check out Riftborn. We'll have the link down below. Don't want to miss out on this. It's nope. ending in only a couple days, so... Make sure you hop on it. Don't put it off. No. Don't click that link right now. We don't, we don't procrastinate up in here. But yeah, that's all. As always, guys, thanks for watching.